Larry Concannon here in uh, Cross Malina. Larry, could you just uh, set the scene? Put, give me an idea. What was here before Board Namona? But up to your south and to the to the west was the range of Neffin Mountains, and uh, the bog then spread from the toe of the mountains right towards the sea on the north coast. But it wasn't all la- uh, boglands that was suitable at all for for uh, for uh, industry. A lot of peat was being cut on it, all hand one turf. There was no industrial turf at all. There was at the beginning of uh, at the beginning of the the war, the the CPS was called the County Production Scheme. It wasn't Bordenomona, but it was before Bordenomona, run by the county councils. And they were producing sod turf, little machines that ran on rail tracks and they hand fed the machines and they produced sod turf. And that turf was sold generally, brought to Dublin and parked in the Phoenix Park. First place they sent me to was Mayo and that's where I ended. I mm. never got a transfer out of it. <laughs> so it was so, to Heller to Connacht. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing. There was really nothing, you see. And that's when I came. There was a Nissan hut there when I arrived and there was a man named John James McLaughlin, he's still alive, God bless him, and he was in charge of the store and we were they were building an office at the time and there was about six of us as surveyors came in the in the 51, 52, spring of 52. So our job was then to get out on the moorlands and start a survey and set out a grid all over the place and get the depths. Really what they were after was, was the gradients. Had to, the, the gradient had to be uh, suitable enough for mach- uh, mechanisation for machines. And the other thing was the peat resource, the depth of peat, mm. which was very difficult because even though it looked flat, there were underlying ridges underneath. Mm. And there was, where it looked, looked good on the surface, there was a very shallow depths, maybe of four feet, five feet. And that was no good at all, really. Yeah. That had to be eliminated. So the, the survey took a long time. It took something like two to three years. Now, where did these people come from? These were usually the local people. But tradition had it here. Uh, there was no work other than the little plot of land that you had. Mm-hmm. Now, if you had a large family, and most people had large families mm-hmm. in those days, you were talking about four to 12. You know, that was the run of things. Now, most of those people had to emigrate, and they emigrated temporarily or permanently away to mostly Britain and America. Yeah. Now, the see the the temporary people, they would go every spring. In those periods, I can recall it, there was a, 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 a company in Belmullet called McIntyre's. They were, they were retailers and kind of wholesalers, big, big outlet. And they bought all the turf. People were bartering their, their, their purchases. By, he'd buy the turf and they'd get their groceries and that type of stuff. Uh, you could write volumes about the drainage uh, experience. It was the most difficult bog of all. As I explained to you earlier, it was just covered with loose water. There was something like 60 to 70%. And it usually where this looser water was, was the areas that were more suitable for board activ- the board pneumonia activity. It was mm. the flat areas mm. and the deeper areas. Mm. But it was, there was 60 to 70% loose water. I mean loose in lakes. Mm. So it was impossible to get machinery through. You could only put a drain from one lake to the next and try and tap the water through. You meant, you made a comment there that when, when did the workers start? Well, the, the drainage work really didn't really start until about 53. There, there was a great deal of this loyalty and pioneering type of atmosphere. That's mm. what was there behind it all. The powers that be, the, the, the likes of Todd Anders. Uh, he was totally committed to Mayo. He was totally committed to Mayo. No matter what had happened, he was going to get something there. Let it be mid South Peter or mid Peter. He was going to. Then he had others behind him who were prepared to go down that road. There was, there was conflict. I mean, I was aware of the conflict, even as a young man. There was conflict as to whether it was the right thing to do because it was going to cost the moon and the stars. From about 1967 to 19. 19- 67 to 1971 or 72 mm. and it was called Fodin. Fodin was the name of the, the production. It was a machine that went out, took the peat off the surface, put it through macerators like they would in a big sod turf machine and 
spread it out on the surface of the millipede fields mm. in sod form, in small four small.